Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. Uh, I am Bumi Gadia, Product Marketing Manager for MSC Natron. I have here with me Al Robertson, who is the Product Manager for MSC Natron, and I have uh, development leads here uh, with me as the panelists as well, Hemant Patel, um, Fisher Yu, um, David, and Peter Sharp. Um, so we will get started um, since we have a lot of topics to cover today. Um, so welcome to today's webinar. Um, we will first go through the introduction and agenda uh, of this webinar here. Um, first of all, we will, I will introduce you to some of the dynamic analysis enhancements done, and this one mainly uh, frequency as a function of temperature for frequency dependent materials and some PEM enhancements. Uh, then we'll move on to nonlinear enhancements, uh, where we will introduce the geometric and imperfection in solution 400, uh, nonlinear buckling in solution 400, and some of the um, viscoelastic material um, enhancements that we have in this release. Um, next, we'll have some rotodynamics enhancements. Uh, then we'll move on to topology optimization. Um, we'll then talk about some element enhancements, fatigue enhancements, and um, last but not the least, we'll move on to the numerical methods, um, um, or as you call it, high-performance computing enhancements. Um, here we will talk about the performance and efficiency improvements with uh, AVL Excite interface. Uh, Cassie today took solver support uh, for inertia relief and uh, GPU out of core uh, for large problems. Um, we'll reserve about uh, 10 minutes at the end of the hour for questions and answers, um, but you can type your questions in the Q&A panel. Um, so please type your questions in the Q&A panel during the presentation and we will either reply to them during the presentation or we will read them out loud if it is something that we need to discuss with you. Um, then we can, uh, we can read it out loud at the end of the presentation and reply to you um, as always. Um, if you have any technical difficulties, please type in the chat window uh, and we will be able to help you out, okay? Um, so let's get started. Um, so first, um, we have two major enhancements in dynamic analysis uh, here. Uh, enables, enabling frequency as a function of temperature for frequency dependent materials. Um, let's talk about that one first. Uh, in, until version uh, 2018 in MSC NASRAN, we allowed, um, uh, allowed its material specification um, to be um, frequency dependent, right? Uh, and then uh, in, also in the, in the specification of structural damping for anisotropic material, the restriction that uh, damping must be, there is a restriction that the damping must be proportional to the stiffness. Um, this was removed and uh, the damping coefficients can be a function of uh, frequency. Uh, in version 2020, these features are extended further to allow frequency itself to be a function of temperature for these uh, frequency dependent um, materials. Um, so basically, as you can see here, you can specify it um, according to, similar to this graph shown here, um, not just uh, frequencies uh, dependent material, but also temperature for these frequencies. Uh, the benefit of this is, uh, is basically uh, mechanical properties uh, of uh, constituent fiber and matrix materials often exhibit significant uh, frequency dependency uh, sensitive to the temperature. Uh, and uh, the MAT1F, F, mat MAT2F, mat MAT8F, mat MAT9F, these cards are, um, are, call, are corresponding cards to MAT1, MAT2, and so on. And then the entries are, uh, these entries are, re are referred to table, five, table D5 entry, which provides a method to include the influence of local temperature variation on uh, uh, frequency dependent material properties. So here is the usage of it. Um, you can see that the table D5 um, to reference is referenced with table DI, where I equals to one to four. And this is supported with solution 108, 111, um, 200, and solution 400 with analysis equal to DFREC or MFREC. Uh, in uh, 2020, um, as I said before, we, uh, these entries are corresponding with MAT1, MAT2, MAT8, and MAT9. And um, this allows you to have the frequency um, as a function of temperature. Um, here is another simple example. You can go through this in the release guide. So I'll skip through this one real quickly. Um, some limitations and guidelines to keep in mind here are MAT IF entries uh, and MAT TTI entries that point to the same MAT I entry are incompatible. So you would get a fatal message issued in this case um, if you um, if you don't follow this. Uh, frequency as a function of temperature is a spatial feature, and uh, temp and temp D entries are required to specify uh, the spatial temperature of the model. So make sure you have those in your model. Um, 
Next, we, uh, there's no advantage of subcase case control uh, structure reusing existing stiffness, uh, mass, and loads as all are recomputed at uh, any change in temperature in it. Uh, frequency as a function of temperature is a spatial feature and requires a double interpolation. So for large models, analysis time can be significantly lower, so, uh, larger, longer, so please keep that in mind, right? Um, next, we will move on to some of the other dynamic anal analysis enhancements. Here we have the modal damping in MSC NASDAQ uh, AVL Excite interface. Um, so this is uh, similar to the Adams uh, MNF interface. Um, the uh, modal damping is added um, to the EX, uh, EXD file using the usual MSC NASDAQ mechanism. Um, that is using uh, SDAMP case control and table DMP bulk data entries. Um, they can refer more about this. Um, XTSD based data recovery for Adams MNF interface is also being added so to minimize the data storage and enable uh, efficient data recovery in MSC NASDAQ. The MSC NASDAQ Adams interface introduces the EXDSE out based um, data recovery for solution 112. Um, to use this method, employ EXDSE out in solution 103. Uh, MNF generation run is um, shown here, as you can see. Um, next, we have uh, Adam simulation um, efficient AXDS out based uh, data recovery in solution 112 is achieved, like uh, as shown over here. Uh, moving on, uh, we will now discuss the PEM some of the PEM enhancements that we have done. In this one, we have four major enhancements, uh, trim C interior uh, grid data recovery, uh, trim components uh, coupling definition with element ID, uh, PEM job restart, and PEM support for solution 108. So let's go through them. Um, here we have uh, the PEM uh, trim, data trim component data recovery function that we have added. Um, so trim data recovery was uh, available only for the surface nodes previously, and we have expanded it to include interior nodes as uh, MSC NASDAQ version 2020. Uh, and uh, the benefits of this is it's, it's more complete uh, data recovery um, now, and it's easier to control um, uh, for desired data recovery, and new case control uh, entries have been introduced, uh, T displacement, uh, T velocity. T acceleration, uh, where T stands for trim component, um, and you can define a separate uh, data recovery set for each trim component in this case. Uh, here we have trim data recovery usage, uh, where we have new case control section commands. As I said earlier, you need to have a set ID uh, corresponding to those, um, uh, those trim component uh, individual set IDs. Um, so as you can see, set ID equals to trim CID one slash uh, set one uh, and so on. Um, here is an example of it. Um, T disk equals to 17, set 17 equals to 3 103, and so on. Um, some notes here uh, T displacement equals to all can uh, generate very large amount of data uh, for, um, you know, out the output data will be calculated for very large, like it will take longer because of that and stuff like that. So be careful about that. Uh, old uh, trim uh, component data recovery request. Um, is no longer supported and will cause a fatal message if, um, if used. Uh, next, we have um, the trim component uh, coupling definition with element ID. So uh, here, viewing a trim component coupling uh, definition based on just grid IDs can be difficult. Um, so we were requested by our customers to be able to add this uh, to add this capability, so it's easier to visualize as well. Uh, so new plot PLT surf elements uh, can be described the can describe the coupling surface mesh. So as you can see over here, this is the bulk data entry. Uh, the benefits of this is it is easier to view um, the coupling definition using PLT surf elements, uh, and it's easier to spot any potential coupling surface uh, definition errors. Um, so basically, these grids are converted into um, elements here. Um, next, we have the trim, uh, the usage for the same thing. Uh, it connects three, four, six, or eight grids, mirroring um, triad three, uh, quad four, triad six, and uh, quad eight surface elements. Um, PLT surf ID can be used to describe the trim component um, surface coupling on ACP EM um, uh, CP. 
Uh, plot surf ID must be referenced on set three with uh, element descriptor. Element ID set uh, definition needs to be given here. Uh, do not use set one uh, grid ID set definition. This will result in incorrect coupling or, um, uh, or, or fatal error. Okay, so um, I'll go on to the next. So a PLT surf elements are similar to plot L's, uh, non-structural visualization um, only elements. Um, to create plot surf, um, surface wrapper elements can be created over trim C using uh, triad three, quad four, triad six, quad eight, um, and change these elements to PLT surf and remove uh, PID fields. For quad eight uh, with uh, mid side notes, further editing is needed in this case. Okay, um, here we have the result comparison for uh, GID versus element ID based coupling definition. And as you can see, the results correlate with each other uh, very nicely. Um, so we have done several benchmarks on this, um, this uh, capability. Uh, moving on, we will discuss the PAM restart uh, capability that we have added. Uh, basically, um, this one is um, restart from, uh, it's similar to any of the restarts that you might be used to doing. Um, we are now supporting restarts from cold start databases for uh, MSC NASA and PAM analysis as well. The benefits of this is uh, reduced runtime for loading, um, sourcing frequency, and data, cover, data recovery changes. Uh, some of the notes uh, that we have here are for efficient restarts. Um, these should remain unchanged. Uh, trim GRP, um, no additional deletion, delete, deleting the trim components, basically, so they should remain the same. Uh, individual trim components, including uh, coupling nodes, uh, should be given. Uh, T-disk, T-velocity, T-aspiration, case control entries should be there. Uh, coupling nodes of uh, structural and or cavity. Uh, is required and uh, restart job with DMP greater than one is not supported if cold start uses DMP greater than one. So we'll talk more about this last point uh, in a few seconds. So here's the usage as usual. We have scratch equals to no when we submit the cold start. Um, that's a that's the general rule for restart with MSC NASDAQ. And the statement for cold start um, that master and then a restart logical equals to C start and uh, use scratch equals to yes for restart drop submittal. Uh, DMP support from what I, from the last uh, note, the last uh, bullet point, basically here, if you have DMP equals to one for cold start and DMP equals to one for restart, it works okay. Um, DMP equals to one for cold start and DMP greater than one uh, for restart works okay as well. Um, and a DMP greater than one for cold start and DMP equals to one for restart works okay, but the DMP greater than one if you have in cold start and restart, that is not supported basically. Um, so um, here we have the performance uh, for uh, subcase or load case restart. Um, you can see here we have solution 101 cold start and one, sorry, 111 cold start and 111 restart. So uh, moving on, we have the PEM support for solution 108. Um, so in solution 108, we're doing the physical coordinates, uh, coordinates and we have extended um, this um, support for PEM in solution 108. The benefit of this is that um, the analysis method um, includes a direct as well as modal approach, basically. and um, this method is to verify solution 111 results. Um, some of the notes that you should uh, keep in mind is that since this is a physical coordinates uh, system, uh, the problem size is bigger, uh, and we, rec we recommend um, forcing the frequency, uh, recommend reducing the forcing frequency to one person of uh, one person of solution 111 job, or up to five percent, basically. So um, that's our recommendation here. Uh, usage, uh, we, uh, steps to turn, uh, basically you just have to change solution um, 111 to 108, and um, you have to remove the domain solver command if there is any, um, remove or comment out the method case control command if there is any, if you still have it, it's, 
it's not going to give you a fatal message. It's just going to, um, you know, ignore that in that case. Um, so, um, yeah. Uh, and again, as I said earlier, we recommend uh, reducing the forcing frequencies to um, less than 5% of original um, solution 111 run. And uh, change master frequencies of each uh, trim component to match uh, forcing frequencies uh, to improve performance and reduce disk space demand. Um, so here is a simple example uh, where we have the NASCAR normalized performance. Um, it's a small model here, um, but we have solution 111, we have 400 frequencies, and solution 108, we have uh, one frequency. So you can see the performance data here. Okay, next we'll talk about some of the nonlinear enhancements. Um, if you have questions, please type in the Q&A panel and um, the panelists can address them during the presentation um, or you can ask at the end of the presentation as well. Um, so let's get started with nonlinear enhancements. Uh, first one is geometric imperfection in solution 400. In this one, we have, uh, we have four uh, sections that will go through introduction and benefit, uh, input user input interface and output and some example. Um, so here we have um, most uh, FEM analysis are based on perfect geometry. Uh, geometric imperfection is uh, unavoidable, you know, unavoidable in reality due to the manufacturing processes um, and imperfection may have uh, significant effects on uh, unstable structures um, as well as post buckling analysis with uh, geometric imperfection is very important. Um, the benefits of this capability is that it provides an easy way to take uh, geometric imperfection effects into account. And version 2020 includes nonlinear buckling capability, uh, which can be used with uh, geometric imperfection capability as well. Uh, the approach for this is a pre-run uh, pre analyzed model with uh, perfect geometry in static buckling or normal mode solution and uh, save uh, the mode shapes or displacement. Uh, solution types are solution 101, 103, 105, or 400 with NL static, uh, static modes, um, buckling, or NL tran. The output is uh, for this one is given in OP2 or HDF5 file. And uh, the scale and or combination um, uh, of the saved uh, displacement slash uh, mode shapes uh, or used supplied files is, um, is given. And uh, this is added to original geometry to form the imperfect geometry. So here we import the pre-run imperfection data to OP2 or HDF5 format. And then uh, we import the supplied IMPF imperfection text file. Uh, so it can be a combination of um, the user supplied or the saved displacement on mode shape, basically. Um, uh, and then the third step would be to analyze the model with imperfect geometry in analysis type of uh, solution 400. Usage of this is basically uh, we have FMS assign um, statement to import um, pre-run imperfection data. Uh, the input T2 uh, is the existing capability. Um, the in, uh, sorry, assign HDA5 input is the new capability, and the the third new capability is the INP uh, INPFIN, which is a freeform text file which can be imported into um, inserted assigned as well. So this is a new capability as well. Um, the case control section commands are IMP IM perfect equals to IMPFID. Um, this is about the subcase level to to activate the imperfection. And um, O imperfect is, uh, is another case control section command that is introduced uh, newly. And this is also about the subcase level for imperfection output. Okay, uh, false data section, uh, IMP geom. Uh, this is required to define a single imperfection case and IMP case. Uh, this is an optional input about data entry uh, for multiple imperfection cases. The usage of this uh, is imperfect equals to N uh, case controls command, uh, where N is the identification number for IMP geom or IMP case. Uh, and must be involved in all subcases. 
Oin Perfect. Uh, this is the uh, this is the entry for um, for Oin Perfect. This is how uh, it. You can refer to the quick reference guide for more details about this. Um, this is the output request of imperfection shape. Uh, GM option is to output the grid entries with imperfection to punch file. Uh, INP GM bulk data entry. So this is um, this is how the bulk data entry is. Here you can see that the ID is referred by IMP case bulk data entry or uh, I am uh, I'm perfect uh, case control command. Set ID is default value of set ID I and the scale is the default value of SI. Uh, unit is the default value for unit I basically and so on. Uh, we also have subcases. Um, uh, each uh, subcase specifies um, which subcase solution is going to be used and uh, this is ignored for the text file input. Uh, step ID is for solution 400 only, and this specifies which step uh, solution is to be used. Uh, this is ignored again for the text file input, and, and so on. The, there's mode, set ID again, and S1, and so on. Okay, uh, next we have the IMP case bulk data entry. Um, so as you can see here, this is an entry to collect the IMP GM entries, and um, it is referred by I am perfect case control again. Uh, ID is referred by I am perfect case control, and IMPFIDI um, is the ID for IMP GM entries, um, and two is allowed in this case. Okay, um, now we have the format for IMPF file. Um, this is a CSV like uh, text file basically, uh, and we have a displacement or geometry. Um, this is optional. Um, default is displacement. For displacement, uh, coordinates X, Y, Z are assumed in output coordinate system, um, NASA and global, global system. Uh, for jump, coordinates X, Y, Z are assumed in input coordinate system, um, CP field of grid. Uh, uh, delimiter, delimiters can be comma, uh, space, or tab. GID is required. Um, default is zero for other fields. And um, you can refer more about this in the quick reference guide. This is explained at a, at a length in the quick reference guide as well as in uh, the release guide. Uh, here is an example of the same um, input file, basically, um, for geometry. Okay, uh, we, now we will go through an example for cylindrical buckling with imperfection, uh, cylindrical buckling with, imper with geometric imperfection. So here, um, this is an example that is already provided to you in the NASTRAN documentation. So you can go to the TPL directory and uh, this is the file name if you want to try it out. Uh, Pre-run, uh, solution 105 input deck uh, is given to you. Um, you can assign the HDF5 using the assign HDF5 um, command, and then uh, displacement equals to all. Uh, this case control would basically request all the displacement and um, eigenvectors. MDL param HDF5 one. This will um, request the HDF5 output, as many of you already know. So um, here is basically. Um, the, the run, you can see that imperfect equals to 11, um, OI, OM perfect geom equals to all, and then IMP geom 12. Um, and there's like subcase two and so on. So th there are two subcases, um, the, the subcase 12 and, um, sorry, there, there are two imperfect cases, uh, imperfect geometry 12 and 21, and, um, and we are calculating for both of those basically. Um, so this is the FO6 output for uh, for the imperfect uh, vector and titles with imperfect ID. So you can see imperfect 12, and I'm not showing here imperfect 22, but um, there will be a similar output for imperfect 22 as well. Okay, uh, here is the punch output for uh, uh, for the grid for imperfect ID uh, 12. So you can see the displacement for uh, for for each subcase under imperfection scenario is uh, each subcase is different, uh, and then you can see there is um, also different imperfect scenarios shown here. Okay, uh, 
Moving on, we have, uh, this is again the HDA5 output results uh, shown here. Um, there is an imperfect uh, option table that shows up here. We have a new entry for the imperfect ID um, data as well. Uh, so, yeah, the, this data set uh, is to express uh, imperfect input as the displacement type of output. Uh, here is the pattern of post processing for imperfect. Uh, imperfect ID and imperfect shape is uh, shown. Um, you can see here imperfection um, case 12 and uh, 21 is both shown uh, in the results. This is the mode shape, um, basically the fringe that um, similarly. And then um, the effects of imperfection buckling load factors, uh, we have uh, imperfection case 12 and 21 and different buckling load factor and factor um, to the initial run. So, yeah. Okay, um, next section we talk about the nonlinear buckling, an non buckling analysis. Um, so uh, here, uh, buckling, it's, uh, buckling is analysis used to determine the critical load, um, load of the structure. Um, in version 2014, uh, solution 400 uh, can perform buckling analysis in the domain only, um, similar to 105. But in 2020, solution 400 can now consider material and geometric nonlinearities in buckling analysis. So the user may specify, uh, uh, you, may, you may request nonlinear buckling analysis in any step or subcase at uh, last converged load increments or um, all converged load, load increments. So uh, here, this is a, a basic equation for buckling. I'm not going to go into too much detail about this one. But um, delta K is um, based on the uh, tangential stiffness matrices at two converged uh, load increments. Uh, so we have um, after the algen values are calculated, we calculate alpha, which is the critical buckling factor, and this will give us a p-critical or critical buckling load. Alpha is based on uh, this formula over here. Um, so yeah, I won't go into too much detail um, since this is all fundamental um, buckling, uh, nonlinear buckling analysis. Uh, so um, I will leave it for you to um, go through the release guide and the quick reference guide. So moving on, the benefits of this, uh, this are, are large structures like airplane, automobile, et cetera, um, with many parts and different Contact, uh, geometric, and material nonlinearities must be considered, and a nonlinear buckling analysis may provide more accurate results than linear buckling. Uh, version 2020 also includes imperfection analysis and nonlinear buckling analysis. It gives an engineer a powerful tool to analyze structures which are more likely to buckle at lower load if not built perfectly to specifications. Here is a usage example for that. Uh, uh, we have a new uh, case control command uh, called NLBuck, uh, which requests the buckling analysis. Uh, NLBuck basically has three options, uh, NL load, uh, which we'll not go into here. Um, then there's NLBuck end and NLBuck all. So NLBuck end basically, um, uh, it, it will calculate at the end of each uh, step, it will do the eigenvalue solution. Or you can say, give me eigenvalues at every converged load increment, and that is your NLBuck equals to all. Uh, NLBuck is specified along with uh, um, NL static uh, or NL step, so you need to specify um, that as well. And if NL param is specified, then a fatal message will be issued. Okay. So uh, the usage of this uh, is um, basically we, uh, there are three methods again, as I said earlier, um, uh, we, we still recommend the Lancho's method uh, for most cases, especially in finding the lowest mode. Um, and you might try a different specification for those entries, basically. Okay. Uh, here is an example of a flat plate um, 
We have cantilever plate with 80 shell elements uh, and the load is applied uh, via RBE2 on the free end. And it's analyzed with um, traditional and, and advanced nonlinear elements, um, the Lankov and enhanced inverse power eigenvalue extraction methods with and without a specified range. And uh, geometric nonlinearity was used um, param LG disk one. Uh, rigid equals to linear and rigid equals to Lagrange um, were also tried here, and various values for NL, NINC on NL step entry was also given. Uh, the first mode is off the, um, off the out of plane, and the second mode is in plane here. Okay. So um, here is the SO6 output. Um, you can see here that uh, the load step is given and, and the critical buckling factor alpha is calculated at the end of the eigenvalue analysis. Uh, standard buckling uh, eigenvector output, um, if requested with uh, load step and uh, step labeling is also outputted in the SO6 file. And uh, Here's critical displacements and, um, and loads. If displacement and O loads commands are specified, uh, standard nonlinear static output is also given out if requested. Okay. Uh, this one is comparison uh, of the flat plate results with uh, rigid equals to Lagrange and Lankov method, basically. Um, some guidelines and limitation. Um, NFRAM case control section command is not in, not permitted. As I said earlier, it will give you a fatal message with nonlinear buckling step. Uh, NL step must be specified in the nonlinear buckling step. Um, K method equals to PFNT is um, default and is strongly recommended, along with um, no, uh, NO equals to one for fixed time stepping and INT out equals to yes for adaptive time stepping. Uh, if K method equals to iter, um, then K step equals to one is strongly recommended. It is strongly recommended that um, param LG disk one is specified. If it equals to Lagrange or LG LIM with advanced nonlinear elements is not supported. It is strongly recommended to specify an eigenvalue uh, range for IGAR, IGARL, IGB, uh, IGC both data entries, with, uh, but with NL buck equals to all. It may be difficult to specify a range for all load increments. No to segment is not recommended ex except in the case of permanent glue contact. Okay, moving on, we have the new viscoelastic material uh, format. So um, when modeling viscoelastic material in solution 400, uh, MATVE allows for PRONI series up to five terms. Uh, this was the case until, um, until the previous release. Uh, and now with this new format, uh, we basically allow, uh, we extended uh, this PRONI series to indefinite terms um, to remove the previous limitation of maximum five. Uh, user can input uh, weighing factor and relax relaxation fact, uh, time uh, pairs as many as desired. More uh, viscoelastic material model can be simulated by having uh, this um, limitation being removed. Here is an example. Um, again, you can find this example in the in the TPL guide. Um, so we are here comparing uh, the, the natural results with mark results. And uh, basically uh, what it is is um, uh, hyperelastic only and hyperelastic with viscoelastic materials. Um, and you can see the uh, stress relaxation effect. So the results correlate um, pretty good. Uh, here we have the orange dots are showing the mar uh, the mark results, and the blue ones are the Nastron results for hyperelastic. And uh, the the purple line here is the Nastron uh, hyperelastic, hyperelastic with uh, viscoelastic, and the green dots are mark uh, hyperelastic with viscoelastic, and the results correlate um, pretty well. Okay, um, next section we have the rotor dynamics enhancements. So uh, first, uh, the enhancements to the bearing model modeling. 
there is an in, this is the major enhancement. Uh, there is an increasing interest from OEMs for rotodynamics and uh, an increasing um, accuracy of modeling bearings, basically. Um, so in traditionally, uh, the uh, sea bush uh, have always remained linear. That limitation has now been removed with um, P bush 2DT. Uh, user can pass uh, their um, their bearing properties into MSC NASH and CBUSH 2D uh, two by two terms. Uh, user can run their own extension um, bear, um, own extension bearing uh, codes and uh, external bearing codes and uh, bring back the two by two terms as well in MSC NASH. So uh, new features uh, support um, supported in complex eigenvalue analysis, frequency response analysis, and nonlinear transient analysis. The benefits of this are uh, traditionally two, uh, two uh, D Bush elements are modeled to represent lateral, vertical, and cross-coupled uh, KB properties of bearing as uh, as two by two terms. Uh, bearing properties vary as a function of rotor speed. Um, accuracy depends on modeling bearing properties at all scenarios. Uh, this new capability allows uh, bearing properties two by two terms to be presented um, as a function of speed for linear and nonlinear solutions. Um, so squeeze the uh, film damper representation is also um, enhanced uh, to accurately capture the properties as a function of rotor speed. And externally supported uh, routine can accept displacement, velocity, and acceleration at connected grids. Uh, new UDS enables uh, users to represent both linear and nonlinear dampers as a function of speed. And uh, user defined subroutine also supports external bearing codes. Okay, um, here we will talk about the usage of, uh, of uh, this, this capability, uh, CBUSH 2D A service with um, ELM um, UDS card. Um, so you can see over here that the external routine is um, supplied to the user and can point uh, to an external executable. And here is the output for um, FO6, uh, output FO6 summary, basically. So I'll give you a, min a moment to go through this. Uh, moving on, uh, alternatively, you can use um, PBUSH 2DT entry to, re uh, to refer table D1 lookup, um, and then table D1 look will look up uh, tables for 2 by 2 K, B, and M terms. Uh, this is a much simpler approach than user defined subroutine. Uh, sorry, here. Yeah, this, this is the one that. Um, So here you can refer uh, table D1 entries for um, for looking up the tables, and this is a much simpler approach, as I said. Um, but the user-defined subroutine is uh, more powerful, as the user can utilize their own um, codes, external codes as well. So here is the um, the usage, the card for it in the bulk data entry and the external routine um, as well. Some limitations here are um, PBUSH 2DT um, bulk data entry requires the existence of um, PBUSH 2D card for same PID. I have a spelling error here. This should be PBUSH 2DT. Um, user cannot uh, use both uh, CBUSH 2D connect service uh, and new CBUSH 2DA connect service in the same analysis. And a uh, user can now combine a uh, new uh, PBUSH 2DA connect service with uh, PBUSH 2DT bulk data entry uh, only if the PIDs are different. Uh, uh, similarly, user cannot use both NLR SFD connect service and new NLR um, SFDA connect service in the same analysis. Uh, both PBUSH 2DT and CBUSH 2DA uh, service works only for rotor dynamics analysis, and these are ignored if there is no rotor in the model. 
For running user-defined external connect service, um, correct SDK is needed to be installed. Um, this is the most important point here. Um, so please refer uh, to the release guide um, that has the full documentation on how to set up um, and use the user-defined subroutine. But uh, make sure that the correct uh, software development kit is installed on your machine. Uh, next, we'll talk about the optimization enhancements. Uh, in this one, um, first, uh, we have four big enhancements, overhang constraints for uh, 3D printing, and isotropic solid elements in topology optimization. Um, uh, so this was a long requested item uh, from our customers. Uh, enable CASI solver to support uh, segment to segment permanent glue contact and uh, easier, um, uh, easier DS2 interface to maximize structural stiffness and fundamental frequency. Uh, so this improves, uh, all these enhancements improves, um, the last one basically mainly improves the robustness of DS2 beta method. So first one is the uh, overhang constraints. Uh, so 3D printing is increasing in popularity and demand. Uh, it is basically a layer by layer manufacturing process and sometimes um, supports are needed in, uh, in printing process. So supports use uh, material and uh, they increase cost. So you can optimize to remove or minimize the need for support. So, uh, and you can study the influence um, using the print uh, direction. The benefits of this is um, you can optimize to remove the, uh, or minimize the need for support and study influence of the print direction again. So the usage here, we have uh, simply add the overhang con constraints to top bar entry, um, coordinate system ID and the print direction. So the print direction has a, um, has a huge impact. Uh, here we have uh, the next uh, next enhancement um, in optimization support for anisotropic solid elements in topological design group. So um, design anisotropic um, solid elements uh, referencing MAT9 entry uh, has been, the, the support has been added. Uh, the benefits of this is it will uh, generate a lightweight and cost efficient uh, design when the strength is along um, the given direction. And again, this has, uh, this relates back to the 3D printing. Um, uh, it's good for that because again, it is a layer by layer manufacturing process. So, yeah. Uh, the usage is a P solid ID on a top bar reference, uh, a MAT9 entry. Moving on, uh, next enhancement is support for segment-to-segment -segment permanent glue contact. Um, so CASI is good for um, solid, uh, solid element models. Uh, so previously, uh, it was only supported um, for node-to-segment permanent glue contact, and this works well for optimization as well as um, solution 101. CASI solver performs uh, very well. The user, um, they get 10 times faster um, performance improvement, basically, than the regular solver. Uh, solver. Um, so here is the normalized comparison, performance comparison. And the usage is simply add S method equals to element to use the CASI iterative solver. Uh, next enhancement, we have structural stiffness and uh, frequency, um, maximize the structural stiffness and, max, and, and uh, frequency. So now with this new capability, you can maximize these. Um, so double, this is a double objective function. So you previously, um, you, uh, you were needed to write an equation using, um, using DEQATN. Uh, and uh, so this was needed to write their own uh, DRESP2 um, equation. But um, now there is the ease of use. There is no, no required of this equation. Um, the D, new DRSP function is introduced, SF max, which, which is basically maximizing your stiffness and frequency. Uh, the usage of this is analysis equals to mode um, placed last and uh, DRS1 um, ID for mode uh, placed last in DRS2. Uh, set DRS2 function equals to SF max. 
Okay, um, moving on, we have some uh, elements enhancements that we will go through here. Um, so thermal loading for CBUSH and CFAST elements. Uh, here, uh, there, uh, there are basically, um, uh, this capability has been added and it's useful when connectors or bushing are subject to temperature change. Uh, the benefits of this is uh, PBUSH and PFAST entries has um, expanded uh, the users to allow uh, to apply thermal loading to CBUSH element in linear dynamic and nonlinear structural solution sequences. The usage is a request temperature in case control, uh, combining uh, um, uh, using combinations such as um, temp init and temp load, or temp load with initial temperature specified in PBUSH or PFAST entry. Uh, new PBUSH keyword and T has been added in the bulk data entry. Um, you have three flavors to it, uh, specify alpha for thermal expansion, or specify T ref for temperature in it. Uh, if no temperature in it is specified, sorry, uh, specify T ref if no temperature initial is specified. Uh, specify um, co INL for coincident grid. Uh, so you can give fictitious length uh, for coincident grid uh, P bush uh, and C bush elements basically. Um, for PFAS, similar fields on continuation entry have been introduced. Okay, um, next we have uh, layered solid and shell elements. Uh, so this capability was already available in solution 400 uh, prior to this release. And in version 2020, we are adding uh, this release for all the linear solution sequences. So, so yeah. So basically the benefits of this is uh, modeling of thick composite uh, beams, uh, thick composite shells, um, composite solids, and modeling of large composite parts such as gas turbine plates, stringers, pressure vessels, um, you, you, can use, um, you can use it for linear solution type as well now, and um, thick laminates, um, laminates subject to three-dimensional state of stress, um, cases with loads in direction of laminate thickness, um, layered solid shells useful in cases where um, bending is dominant and model has fewer layers through thickness. And all about mentioned scenarios can be simulated in all linear solution sequences um, in MFE Natron with version 2020. So here is the usage of it. Uh, basically, you have uh, the thick, la uh, so thick um, cylinder layer here, uh, for example, and PCOM LS is referenced by C hexa. Uh, and layer solid linear in PCOMP LS C8 line. Um, BH8 equals to SL comp and INT8 uh, equals to L is specified. Um, layered solid quadratic in PCOMP LSC20, uh, BH8 equals to SL comp, um, INT8 equals to Q, and solid shell, we have um, similar um, yeah, entries for that. Okay, here is an example of a uh, uh, wrapped thick uh, cylinder under pressure loading. So um, it, it, this example is from demonstration user's guide. Um, again, this is in your documentation already. Uh, this compares with NAFEM's um, output using PCOMP. Uh, results are closer to NAFEM's benchmark in this case um, and can post-process using OP2 and HDFI files. Moving on, uh, we will talk about some NASRAN embedded fatigue enhancements. Uh, so this, uh, this section is, uh, we, have, uh, we have several enhancements under this section, so we will go through them one by one. The first one is uh, fatigue enhancements, uh, reduction of uh, output. So um, in this one, fatigue analysis can generate uh, 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 can generate the, a, lo a lot of output. So previously, the only method um, to limit the output was uh, top STR or top DMG on fatigue definition. Um, the new NNTS value on the fatigue definition, um, fatigue def entry uh, to, to return the top damage entities, um, uh, the most damaged entities have been given and um, can be used in conjunction, uh, conjunction with, the, um, with top stress and top damage parameters basically. Uh, 
then any NTS return, uh, the number of entities based on damage or maximum range, and the range is useful if the model doesn't show any damage. So the user should specify the any NTS on fatigue death entry, and the output is reduced um, to return only number of entities requested. Uh, next, we have a uh, stress trained range vector enhancement for uh, fatigue and national emitter fatigue enhancements. Uh, the, this is a uh, output request. Uh, 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 output request in fatigue case control section. Um, uh, so fatigue is a post processing and uh, entry based activity that returns damage based on stresses. Uh, STR out equals to two returns a stress range factor in basic coordinate system and uh, can be plotted um, on the model and shows a direction of maximum range. So STR out uh, is a case control section command here and our critical plan analysis uh, uh, is done requesting uh, in-plane principles to be calculated at different angles within the plane of the structure for the 2D elements. Um, returns uh, fatigue life at the angle that is most critical here. So the next enhancement we have is the scalar uh, stress response uh, rec rec um, enhancement. Uh, so SDR out equal to four returns the actual response history that is used to calculate the fatigue life of, of all entities requested. And it can generate a lot of data with uh, any NTS, so be mindful of that. This basically allows users to obtain actual scalar stress response uh, history computed and used for fatigue analysis. Okay, uh, next enhancement, we have a uh, stress tensor history. So um, here we have um, the uh, for solution 112, the stress tensor history output can be requested uh, uh, for only those entities for the fatigue analysis. Um, this allows the user to obtain stress tensor history by fatigue analysis and um, a stress case control um, is not necessary with this option. Uh, fatigue case control, um, the Stroud recap. Uh, the uh, Stroud used uh, to request uh, stress output as returned from, uh, from or provided to a fatigue analysis. And SD, um, SDR out equals to one, two, four, or eight on the fatigue case control entry where, um, uh, and the combinations are summed. Uh, so one plus two plus eight equals 11 and you know, yeah. So basically they are um, specified so this way. Uh, benefits of this is that it allows the users to obtain uh, stresses associated with um, used or, or returned from fatigue analysis at only uh, the locations um, computed by or filtered based on fatigue analysis. Next, we have uh, an, an, an angle. Um, so previously, critical plane analysis of 2D element was done with a 10 degree frisk fixed incremental angle. And uh, this new option allows users uh, user specified incremental angles as small as one degree. So the benefit of this is that it allows for more accurate critical angle to be determined. And the usage is um, an angle for a fatigue parameter on the fatigue parameter FTG param entry. And here is the output um, for that. Okay, um, next uh, we have some performance enhancements, uh, duty cycle performance uh, for fatigue, and fatigue enhancements. Uh, solution 112 with duty cycle performance has been enhanced to use version um, two of DCY. So this, get, this gives a significant uh, performance gain. And uh, number of temporary participation factor uh, flies, um, files are significantly reduced, basically. So the file size is so reduced in size a lot. Uh, and uh, the usage is automatic for solution 112 and duty cycle in this case. Uh, next enhancement we have is the uh, support for multi channel files. Um, so some customers have uh, multi channel files that contain load data. 
um, and using solution 112, uh, uh, 112 uh, with these files have to be converted um, uh, to the multi-channel time history into table D1 entries. So the new table, um, uh, table, our, uh, table RPC entry points to the multi-channel files. Internally, data is converted um, into table D1 entries. So um, you require a NEP license, even though it is not necessary to run the fatigue analysis if you want to convert these um, to table D1 entries. Okay, uh, next we will talk about the numerical metrics enhancements or high performance computing uh, enhancements. So, so the first one is performance and efficiency improvements for MSC Nastron 8 el Excite interface. Uh, solution 103 with ACMS and reduction to A set boundary points mainly. Um, so here, MSC Nastron and AVL Excite interface was uh, streamlined for version 2018 um, in July. Uh, 2018 and additional performance issues have now been addressed in version 2020. So um, the benefits of this, uh, this enhancement is faster job turnaround with uh, reduced uh, resource requirements, input output um, and uh, this uh, IO and disk space basically. Uh, no change to the user interface, existing jobs uh, simply just run faster. Uh, target use case uh, is automotive uh, engine block or powertrain with large number of A set degrees of freedom uh, specified. So, yeah. Uh, the usage, uh, no change in the usage here. Um, case control, AVL, EXT command uh, you have to request, and uh, EXT SE out may or may not be specified. Um, domain solver ACMS, if ACMS is used um, to reduce the model um, to the A set boundary. And here is the, uh, basically the performance, uh, the solid model of, for the, uh, it was the solid model of an auto engine, uh, 6.3 million um, grid points, 11.6 uh, uh, million degrees of freedom, um, O size 18.5 million degrees of freedom, and number of O set eigenvalues here was um, 26, 300 hertz, and number of A set degrees of freedom, um, was uh, uh, 3,500, 3, sorry. Uh, memory max equals to 230 GB was specified, SMP equals to 16, and uh, the modest number of eigenvalues we're get, got, we were getting basically, and this was the test environment that we run the job in, and you can see the performance, uh, the, the space in, uh, reduction and the performance enhancement here. It's basically reduced uh, from like 12 hours to four hours and the disk IO and the database size is um, reduced as well. Uh, next we'll talk about the CACI iterative solver support for inertia relief. Uh, uh, so here um, in REL uh, equals to negative one. Um, so I'm sorry, but we are actually going a little bit um, short on time. So we will provide the recording of this webinar. Um, uh, there was just a lot to present today. So sorry about that in advance. Um, I'll try to go through this part really quickly. Um, the CACI solver is an efficient and robust iterative um, solver that uses uh, element geometry to form an um, effective uh, preconditioner. The interface, is, um, interface to this solver was never attempted for inertia relief analysis. Um, large models would benefit from the availability of CACI solver in this case. So the benefits, again, faster drop turnaround with reduced resource requirements, uh, simple, and, uh, simple and free existing user interface. Uh, target use case was a uh, large automotive engine block model uh, and static analysis was performed. Um, Usage, uh, simply add S method equal to element to use the CACI iterative solver and uh, can also set S method equal to SID to use iter bulk data entry with SID uh, equal to SID to customize options um, here and param in rel negative one to and support entry are required here. Um, param in rel negative to support in future version depending on the user response. So we are testing the first capability has been added and uh, negative two, we will, um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get it based on the user response, basically. 
so here you can see the, the, the job was performed. Uh, there were 8 million degrees, 8 million grid points and 48 million uh, degrees of freedom. Uh, one load case uh, was there and these were the memory and SMP um, that was on the machine. And here is the, the test environment that was there. And you can see the effective um, uh, performance basically. Um, Cassie versus uh, versus direct solver comparison. There's a dramatic speed up in in the analysis. So improved uh, GPU acceleration. Um, this one uh, introduction was this was introduced in uh, version 2019 FE1. Uh, limited device memory on GPU 16 16 GB on average. Um, extra um, large models in frequency response analysis were unable to utilize GPUs for. Um, uh, acceleration as they could not fit the GPU memory. In version 2020, out of core implementations are deployed in fast FR, fast frequency, and MPY add, which is basically our multiply add modules. Um, this is used in solution 111, fast FR with MPY add, um, basically, and other solution sequences uh, is MPY add. Uh, benefits uh, it takes advantage of GPU acceleration without an upper limit on the model size. No GPU mem uh, minimum memory is required, and uh, older um, as well as newer GPU architectures can benefit with this. Um, only NVIDIA CUDA uh, com is compatible uh, GPU, um, compatible GPUs. Um, NVIDIA CUDA or compatible GPUs are supported in version 2020, uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, and here we have um, usage. There's no changes to the inputs that are required. Uh, in 2019 FP1, analysis took 40 hours. Um, uh, in 2020, it took 25 hours. So there is a significant, a significant uh, uh, time improvement there. And um, in 2019, uh, some GPUs um, models modules were not being able to run on GPU as it ran out of memory. In version 2020, it manages to execute on the GPU card efficiently. Uh, with, uh, with a throughput increase uh, of two to three times, basically. Okay, uh, some other updates to keep in mind is that uh, here is the list of features that we, that, that will be removed from version 2020 of MSC Nastron. Um, so this is the effort to streamline the program and simplify the ongoing maintenance activities. Um, so it, please review this list of features uh, marked here for depreciation and make sure that uh, we will make sure that there's no uh, disruption to your use of MSC Nastran. But if you see that uh, any of these features that you currently use and do not wish to lose, then please do contact our technical support and we will make sure not to, um, to support you in, in these, um, these parts here. So, um, and then last thing that I want to um, bring your attention to is you have Nastran documentation with your uh, Nastran installation always. Um, some of the new um, new manuals that have been added is High Performance HPC User's Guide and uh, a release guide for this release as well and so on. So please be sure to refer to those documents as well. And with that, thank you for your time and we will now open for questions and answers.